Hi there, my name is MJ and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. And um, if this is your first time of watching me, make sure you subscribe to this channel before you leave. Everything about this channel and what this channel stands for is in my description. So pop into my description and read up. <laughs> this content today is for my registered nurse and it's about how to migrate to New Zealand as a registered nurse without taking the English language test, without taking CAP. In a minute, you're going to know what CAP, CAP is about in this video so if this video is a content that interests you all you have to do is to keep watching this video so i'm going to make sure that this video is comprehensive enough you know and it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide and your go-to video when you want to um, start this process of migrating to new zealand as a registered nurse a lot of people have asked me any other country we can migrate to outside the UK, United States, Canada, you know. And I said, okay, I've read a lot about New Zealand. They pay their nurses up to like 60,000 New Zealand dollars, which is a lot of money. And New Zealand is also a beautiful country and it's amazing. Nursing practice down in New Zealand is amazing. So why not? So I decided to, okay let us explore this country so in this video i'll take you through the new zealand nursing council website and we are going to you're going to see for yourself how to actually you know start this process from the beginning to the end so stay with me as i take you through this process So this is my Instagram page. If you, if you don't mind, you can follow me on Instagram. I usually share, you know, reels and some exciting content on there. Just some very quick content, you know, for you to catch up with information. So you can follow me on Instagram, and that would be helpful. Okay. Um. So now I'm going to because I want this video to be really comprehensive and to show you that. You can do these things by yourself without having to pay anyone any money at all. All you need is the information. So I'm going to open a new tab now. Okay. And I'm going to tap, type in here, Nursing Council of New Zealand. And because I've visited the website before, right? And this is from my own research, guys. I found this website from my own research okay so i'm going to click on that and you can see i'm going through google just because i want you guys to get it okay so nursing council of new zealand is what i'm going to click in and here we are we are on their website we are on the nursing council of new zealand's website so now you can see all of the option here you can see i am a nurse in new zealand i want to be a nurse in new zealand i am a member of the public i employ nurses Whichever person you are, if you're an agency, this option is for you, you know, and if you want to be a nurse in New Zealand, this option is for you. So quickly, let's go down on this website and see what else we've got. So on this side, we can see uh, renew your annual practice and certificate. Of course, that's not for you. Register for internet, I mean, registration for international nurses. Sounds like it. And this is register of practicing nurses. So this sounds like it. And this is what we are going for. So I'm going to click on that. And it takes us to internationally qualified nurses. So these are internationally qualified nurses who meet the nursing council's Standards. So the first thing we're going to go through is what are the requirements? What do you need? But I want to I wanted to go through that with you using their website So it's easy for you to actually go through it step by step yourself Through the checklist through the requirements and everything you need to do at each step on the way Okay, so this is internationally qualified nurses internationally qualified nurses who meet nursing cancer standards may apply to become registered to practice in New Zealand okay 
So, nurses are registered in Australia, they follow a different New Zealand registration process to those registered in other countries and this is because they have an agreement between them to that makes it easier for nurses from Australia to register with them. Okay, so if you're from Australia, you take different um, pathway from others, okay? If you're from Australia, you click I am currently registered in Australia to start your process, but because I know that my audience most of us are registered in another country outside australia yeah so i'm going to make um, make this video based on the larger audience that i've got okay so i'm going to click on i am currently registered in another country okay and then this takes us to this i want to start my application to um, nursing council i have already applied to the nursing council because we are starting a new registration which i'm taking you through we will click on this option Okay, and once you click this, yeah, it's going to show you new application and it will tell you this. Before starting your application, make sure that you read information. You read this information. Okay, so the nursing council standards, the registration process, the registration course, and also frequently asked questions are here for you. Okay, so first of all, let us go through the nursing council standards. Because it is important for us to know what they want. You need to know their requirement, the standard requirement. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's going to tell you that to be eligible for you to, you know, register with Nursing Council of New Zealand, yeah, you need to meet seven standards. Okay, and this is so that we can they, they can make sure that you are safe, you're competent and prepared to nurse in New Zealand. Like every other country, like the UK, the US, will definitely take you through. Okay, so the documentation required to meet the standards is described in CGFNS applicant portal here, which we will also get to. Okay, so now let's go through the first documentation which is your identity you need to prove your identity okay so you must be able to prove that you are who you say you are okay and this you will do definitely on the cgfness applicant portal that we will get to shortly okay and then I can close this and then the English language requirement remember I said that for some applicants you will be exempted you will get a waiver from English language okay so let's go through this quickly so in order for you to register with New Council of New Zealand yeah you must satisfy that you are able to communicate effectively and that your ability to communicate and comprehend English is sufficient and mean it's enough and safe for the public as we can read there and then the nursing council approved english language tests are oet and you know ielts okay and for oet this is a requirement that they want okay for ielts you must achieve a minimum of seven in each of the band okay so you can also combine your results so if you have a result that maybe you didn't meet the requirement in the first one you can combine your results okay and this has to be within 12 months apart okay now this takes us to the waiver part which i said that not everyone needs to take the english language test or oet okay so for the waiver a waiver is i mean an alternative means for you to demonstrate your english language proficiency okay so approval of an english test waiver is at the discretion i mean discretion of the council and is assessed by the council on individual basis okay and you can apply for a waiver by cgfns if your application meets one of, of one or both of the following criteria okay guys i'm not that this is a long process but i need you to understand this that you can do it yourself and that's why i've taken you down to this um the website okay so your education so the first thing that you need is your nursing qualification if you want to get an english test waiver so your, your education that led to you being a registered nurse you need to be able to prove to them that it was examined in english in these countries so is the united kingdom singapore ireland canada or the united states of america so it's either your registration from your qualification as a nurse i mean your studies was done in this countries okay in this one two three four 
five countries okay so the council may require you to provide evidence that you completed your education in this country including your transcript okay that's one of the um, evidences you need to be able to prove that you have a current registration in the United Kingdom or Singapore Island Canada I mean that's required you to pass an English language test so let me explain this to you so I know that there are nurses in the United Kingdom that are also interested in migrating to another country outside of the United Kingdom for whatever reason that they've got okay New Zealand is an amazing country okay so I would not be surprised that anyone wants to go there okay so if you have already registered in United Kingdom if you've done any registration with United Kingdom if you're a nurse currently practicing in the United Kingdom that registration required you to take English language tests okay so because of this you are exempted from taking IELTS again so because you already registered you can apply for a waiver you qualify for a waiver okay if you're in these other countries also maybe Singapore or Highland Canada or the United States of America yeah if you have registered with them yeah to practice maybe you've taken your past the endless hiring okay you already start I mean you you've done the registration that required you to take the English language tests okay for you to join that register you do not need to take the English language test again you can request for a waiver okay then that is exactly what has been explained here okay so now that we've done we're done with that one let's scroll down to this next standard okay which is your current registration this is the third standard that we need to meet you know we need to meet seven standards right so on this one you must have been registered licensed as a nurse in the country where you received your nursing education so this is not for people that are still doing internship and they don't have their final registration you have to be fully registered okay this is one of the standards so you have your own current practicing license from your country or another country that you have studied at okay and you must also provide a verification of your good standing from these countries so if you have practiced in more than one country and you want to verify that you need to it's up to you but one registration is enough okay for you to submit with cgfns because that is where you will be submitting your documents for registration and we will definitely get to the cgfns website for new zealand council shortly okay so that is the third standard now let's go to the fourth standard which is nursing qualification your nursing qualification must be comparable to a bachelor's of nursing degree in new zealand okay now this is where i am yet to really figure out if those with diploma which is three years diploma from nigeria for instance or any other country are on the same level if they can apply because of course you know with uk diploma is considered an equivalent for their registration i mean i had a diploma and with my diploma, I was able to, you know, register with nursing and midwifery council the, in the United Kingdom. Okay, so although it doesn't mean that they are on the same level, but it was acceptable by the time they, I mean, they compared the qualification. Maybe because it's up to three years. Okay, and they believe that the experience is enough. Okay, so now for New Zealand, they want you to have a qualification that's comparable to a bachelor's of nursing degree in New Zealand. So I am not certain if nurses with a diploma can apply with New Zealand. Okay, and that bachelor of nursing degree in New Zealand is at a level seven. If you have a top up degree in UK that might suffice because according to year they said bachelor's degree graduate certificate slash diploma so you can definitely present this to the cgfns you can verify that alongside your diploma um certification okay so a bachelor's degree graduate certificate slash diploma in new zealand is a level seven while in the under the european qualification framework the eqf it is level six 
Okay, so this is the qualification they require. So you either present bachelor's degree or you present a master's degree. The good thing about New Zealand, guys, is that they they they, they weigh your pay according to your level of experience, years of experience, and your qualification. That is how they grade your pay. Unlike the UK, where you just come in and then they say whatever what, doesn't matter whatever qualification you've got, you start as a band five. In New Zealand, I am I have the knowledge that the pay depends on your level of experience, yeah, and your qualification. Okay, so every other thing about your qualification and all is here, okay, which you can read up at your own time when you start when you're ready to start this application. Okay, not everyone likes the UK and this is another option for you if you do not want to come to the United Kingdom. Now, post-registration experience. This is another really interesting <laughs> requirement for um, New Zealand. So, for New Zealand, they need you to have at least two years post-qualification experience so let's read it here so you must be able to provide evidence that you have practiced nursing for at least two years yeah within the last five years as defined below so if you have not worked as a nurse for at least two of the last five years you can still apply for the credential verification service so the verif the verification that you will be doing with cgfns is called credential verification service okay so you need to but there is no guarantee that you will be recommended for registration okay so with the way new zealand works yeah. once cgfns confirms and gives you a credential verification service report they will send it to you and then you then send it they'll recommend you for registration if you if, if you are happy in the in the report and then that's what you now need to send to new zealand i mean nursing council of new zealand okay to start your registration which will we get to i don't want to jump the process so what you need to understand from this phrase is that you need to have at least two years post qualification experience for new zealand's authority to register you on the register the next one is the fitness of practice so you must be able to demonstrate that you're fit for registration and then you will be advised to when to apply for your criminal history checks yeah during the application process so you'll be required to complete an international criminal history check for every country that you have lived in for 12 months okay if you have lived in new zealand for six months or more you're required to complete a criminal history check through the ministry of through the ministry of justice okay every other thing about that is that this is the one that really concerns the internationally qualified nurses so now let's go to the competence for practice so this one is another one that you can get a waiver for and we're going to get through the list of countries that can get a waiver for the competence assessment program which is popularly called CAPS okay so many nurses who have registered overseas we need to successfully complete a competency assessment program so this assessment program basically prepares you for how nursing role is carried out in new zealand and it takes i think about six to twelve weeks long for you to you know complete it so for you to get this um cap you need to pick uh, an institution that is verified to you know carry out those program you register with them and on your successful application they put you on the program so like i said this program takes about generally six to twelve weeks long and it includes theory and also the clinical components yeah and you have about two years from the date of your notification to begin a cap so you have to do it as soon as possible so if you currently on the registration in the united kingdom highland australia singapore the united states of america or canada you might not need to do this cap okay they will let you know during your registration if i mean during your application if you need to do it or not okay so that is all about the seven standards that they need you to meet now let's go to 
the registration process. So for the registration process for internationally qualified nurses, yeah, with other registration, it is basically, yeah, basically three steps. Okay, so the first step is you apply to CGFNS. The second step is you request for CGFNS to send your report, which is the credential verification service report to nursing council. Okay, and then the third step is that you apply to the nursing council themselves. So let me expand this and show you. So here is saying that you need to apply to CGFNS. Okay, the website to apply once you click here, you will see the details of information that you require for your CGFNS. So here is the CGFNS website and it's basically ncnz.cgfns.org. Okay, so here you're going to have to present your identity document, your employment history, your educational history, your license validation, and the language proficiency. These are the documents that you need to provide. And at any point, if there's any exemption to your English language proficiency, they will say it. To start this process, you don't need to have your English language proficiency just yet. You can go ahead with your verification. And how much will this cost here? The fee. This is how much it will cost you to apply for the CGFNS, the um, Credential Verification um, Service Report with CGFNS. And that's about $100, US dollars. Okay. And also here, the good thing about here is you have links and links to resources. Okay. So this is the Nursing Council of New Zealand website, which I'm going to go back to. And this is where you start your portal. This is the applicant portal for New Zealand. And this is a and it's an handbook that takes you through the whole process of applying for your documents and everything that you need to know. Okay, so now let me go to request to send your um, report. So once you have received your report, you need to request for CGFNA to send this report to nursing council. And it will take about three working days to receive your report. Okay, and then you will now receive an email that is now inviting you to complete the application process for your registration. And then the third step is that... And in this third step, you then need this nursing council will then assess your application against the seven standards that we went through earlier to make a decision regarding your registration, your fitness to practice, your criminal history checks, and all of that. And you may be they will let you know if you're going to have to do the CAP, okay, prior to your registration. Okay, the New Zealand Council will let you know about that. And once you're registered, you'll be asked to apply for an annual practicing certificate. It's all you need to know to start your application with the Nursing Council of New Zealand. Okay, and here is where we're going to see the registration costs. So how much is this going to cost you? So the registration cost for CGFNS is... 300 us dollars and then the nursing council application and processing fee is 485 new zealand dollars so any other related cost you know translation of your original documents into english that's if it is required the cap fee the international um, criminal history check and all of that all fees are not refundable okay these are all the additional costs that you might incur and this competent assessment program fee depends, if you need it, depends on the institution. Okay? And how to apply, how to go through that, they will give, they will give you in the email when they apply, when they invite you to start your application. Now, since you have read all of this, you can also go to the frequently asked questions. Okay, you can go to the frequently asked questions. So registration process step one, registration process step two, and then living and working as a nurse in New Zealand. These are more, more of the likely asked questions. I mean, frequently asked questions from their applicants. Okay, we've read all of the above. When you wish to start your application, your first application, guys, starts with CGFNS okay once you click begin my application you come here this is for returning users which will continue to log in and this is for new users you click here to start your registration 
okay so every information so here you need to create a portal you need to create a profile with cgfns so you provide all of your information here you know and then you sign up start your application from here okay so i hope that you found this explanation useful okay let me quickly take you through the summary of the steps that you need to go through for you to be able to practice as a registered nurse in New Zealand. The first step is for you to create an account with CGFNS. So let me take you through the summary of your registration with CGFNS and your verification with CGFNS. So the first thing is you need to create an account with CGFNS, okay? And then you complete your free applicant profile. Third step is that you need to purchase an order for that CVS, which is a credential verification service report okay that you need to purchase for your New Zealand Council um, your, your nursing council of New Zealand rather okay and then the fourth process is that you need to upload all the required documents by CGFNS okay so your identity document is the first one that you need to submit and it needs to be notarized what do I mean by notarized notarization is you're gonna take it to an official recognized body if you're if maybe a post office or if you don't have that kind of service there is a link also for you with cgfns if you don't have that kind of service in your country where you can notarize a document there's a link on cgfns where you have to pay for the service and you know you get it done so for notarization in the united kingdom which i have done before in the past you need to take the original document and photocopy about two of the original document you take it to the post office they are the post office you then you tell them that you want to notarize a document they look at the original document and they confirm that the photocopy is exactly what is in the original document and they notarize it put a stamp on your photocopy so you need to go with about two photocopies because you need a copy with you and a copy that you will have to send to cgfns okay every of this process everything you need to go through at each stage is being provided on that website which we have seen okay and then you need to then so when cgfns accepts all your documents all, all your notarized documents and everything via post you know yeah via post i told you that a service available with cgfns called notary cam that you might use if you don't have that service available in your country and the website is on cgfns website where you can do that okay you have to pay for it of course and then once they are once they approve your document that's gone and then the fifth step is for you to send all required forms so with cgfns with, with the experience i have with cgfns yeah they will, they will supply some documents for you to print out and send to your school maybe for nursing council or your school maybe like you they need to receive your transcript maybe they need to receive your verification of licensure from your nursing council and all of that those forms you need to send directly to your school or the nursing council body and this is the council body or your school that will then return those documents to cgfns directly it's not gonna go through you again the only document that will now be going through you after you have successfully applied with cgfns is your report your set your i'm um, sorry your credential verification service report it will come to you and then you have a certain period of time for you to make sure that you authorize cgfns to send that report to the nursing council of new zealand okay it is very important that you do not miss this step it is very important that you do not miss this step of authorizing cgfns to send your service report to the nursing council of new zealand okay so that is that the the, uh, the address that you need to you know send by korea or by mail to cgfns is on the cgfns website okay now let's talk about getting jobs let's talk about getting jobs in new zealand yes i've gone through all this process i've done all of the required things and everything you know what next what next do i need to do guys it's also worth me noting that with cgfns you have to be sure that all of your documents are valid yeah and you do not make any error at any point or else you have to make several calls and it will delay your application so make sure you do all of the things right okay only send um um only input you know um qualifications that you really want to verify that you can easily verify for instance if you're still doing a degree and you are not done there's no point trying to verify it okay so only verify qualifications that you currently hold and you can easily verify 
verify for instance if i will be registering with nursing council of new zealand yeah i will be verifying my nursing my nursing degree from my country and the one in this country okay my nursing registration from my country and my registration in this country which is enough because the more services you had the more money you have to pay okay i hope you understand my point okay so now let's go back to getting jobs in new zealand i was able to find um, about two three websites where you can get jobs in new zealand okay of course following your application and everything and the first one where i first website i got from their link is um kiwi health jobs so kiwi health jobs will connect you to employers that are recruiting health care workers nurses in new zealand okay another one i found is airstaffrecruitment.co.uk i don't know why it's holding a uk website yeah but i suppose they also recruit nurses you know for new who are interested in practicing in new zealand another website i found is ihlgroup.com so i've giving you kiwi health jobs yeah ihrgroup.com yeah um staff recruitment.co.uk i don't know why as uk but they recruit for new zealand and linkedin you can also get jobs on linkedin jobs all you have to do is set alert for these jobs and you know watch out for um apply online drop your cv online and watch out for interview slots so with new zealand i don't think they have any kind of agency or a funding that they give nurses like the united kingdom where you know coming to the united kingdom for me i got i mean a whole lot of nurses we got sponsored fully sponsored and what i thought when i'm when i mean fully sponsored our flight you know some of our exam fees were refunded like my cbt ielts were refunded we even got i mean free accommodation for some certain period of time some people got for, i got for about three months some of my colleagues got um you know subsidized apartment you know so with uk there was a lot of benefit for us okay but but with New Zealand, I don't think they have that kind of package. So you have to, you know, have the budget, have the money to spend, which you have go gone through some of the application fee and registration fee process that you might require. Okay. So with New Zealand, there is no particular, um, you know, um, sponsorship that they offer Let you. Let me give you the health care, um, health care skills shortage list in New Zealand. So there are a lot of new zealand just like the uk also have you know their own shortage occupation list and on this list a lot of professionals are on this list and we have the anesthetic technician cardiologist emergency medicine specialist general practitioner of course nurses midwives you know psychologists physicians pediatricians um sonographers surgeons um resident medical officer a whole lot radiographers are on this shortage occupation list so if you're interested and you're on this list and you want to migrate to New Zealand all you have to do is you know go online and start to search because my channel is more about talking about nurses and figuring out ways that nurses can migrate to other countries I hope that you found this video useful I read a lot about New Zealand yeah and I found out that they pay nurses, you know, up to $60,000 and even more. And they also pay nurses based on their registration, their level of experience and qualifications, okay? Which I think makes more sense, okay? So if you have more qualification, the more, I mean, the chances of you to get more pay in New Zealand. And I'm talking about registrations that are valid and recognized in New Zealand, like midwifery, you know, your master's, your degree. They are recognized in New Zealand and you can add that up to your CGFNS verification. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did find this video useful or you still have any question regarding this video, maybe there's a part you still do not understand because I'm hoping that I have been clear enough and I try to break it down enough. I'm going to also make a thread on my Twitter that you can, you know, that you can be a go-to to support you when you start your application and also make a simple reel on Instagram just to give you pointers on how to go through this registration okay so you can follow me on instagram at proud underscore nosmj follow me on twitter proud nosmj without the underscore and follow me on tiktok too although tiktok is more of fun for me <laughs> but if you want to unwind from all of this migration 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 
post you can follow me on tiktok okay so if you have any question about this video drop it in the comment section and we're going to you know figure it out together okay if you are yet to subscribe to this channel i hope i have convinced you that this channel is one of the best channel out there that you need to be subscribed to and turn my notification on i always drop new video every sunday at 1 p.m so always you can turn your notification on or always look out for my youtube notification on this content if there's any other information i find out and i need to update on this video i am going to you know share it with you hope that you found this video useful and helpful in your process i wish you guys all of the best cheers